Hello there, and welcome to this part of the music lesson. I hope that you really enjoyed that rather special rendition of The Weller Man in a TikTok style. What an exciting project that was. Well done to all who took part. And I hope you really enjoyed our Composer of the Month this week. How did you do in the hide and seek game? I wonder. Of course, next week, it'll be a new composer. How exciting. And so, on to our musical time travel. Now, I wonder if you can remember what periods in history we've travelled to so far on our adventure of musical time travel. Cast your mind back. Well done. We went, first of all, to the medieval period, and we encountered some very striking plain chant singing. And you'll remember that we did the Dies Irae plain chant of popular fame now in our lesson with some glockenspiels. That was very, very fun, wasn't it? Well done. And after that, we went on to the Renaissance period and we discovered the music of Palestrina and it was extremely beautiful vocal music written um, for the church, of course. And we discovered about the split in the church with um, composers like Josquin, can you remember him? Josquin Depré, writing for the Protestant church and then Palestrina for the Catholic church. And we sung some Palestrina together, that beautiful round. And after that, we went to the Baroque era and we learnt about the improvements in instrument manufacture and the um, availability of instruments to more people. And uh, we learnt about Vivaldi's Four Seasons, didn't we? And you did some tremendous work yourselves on um, those Four Seasons compositions. They were terrific. We went to the classical period and we looked at music from composers such as Mozart, and Beethoven. And that brings us up to speed with what we're going to be looking at this lesson, which is the next era after the classical period, and it's called the Romantic Era. Now, on the face of it, this sounds like everybody went all mushy and decided to write love songs and uh, pieces to their uh, darling beloveds and to be very, very soppy and sentimental. I love you. Most ardently. Please do me the honor of accepting my hand. Sir, I... Are you laughing at me? That's not really what the romantic period is about. So in the classical era, there was an emphasis on things being really well structured and really well balanced. You may, may remember me talking about the balance of a Haydn piano sonata in Composer of the Month just before half term. And the balance of the form was really important in the classical era. But this meant that composers sometimes felt a little bit stifled emotionally, that they couldn't really express everything inside them through their music because they had to focus on making everything really perfect. And in the Romantic era, there was a real emphasis on drama and emotion and the composers expressing their own feelings through their music. So a lot of um, Romantic works are autobiographical. That means the composer wrote them about themselves. If I wrote a book about my life, it would be an autobiography. So a lot of symphonies in the Romantic era are like musical autobiographies about the inner struggles of that composer. And because of this, it meant that the pieces in the Romantic era got longer and longer until you got real epic symphonies which were over an hour long and really, really long operas as well, which means it's difficult to study them in a 50 minute lesson, but we'll do our best. So for the Romantic era, we're going to embark on a two-week project about one random Romantic composer. And in a moment, you'll be selecting your composer using my magical, mystical Romantic Composer Randomizer, which is very exciting. 
But first I'll just say a little bit about the project. So the project you'll complete on Seesaw and you have two weeks to do it, which means that you shouldn't submit your task for this week, you can just save it as a draft. And next week there won't be a Seesaw task, but I will be posting a video for Composer of the Month, so I'll put that up as an announcement. And your project has three pages, as well as a title page. So the first page is all about the... So the first page is a fact file about that composer. You've got to find out the basic facts about them. The second page is called Digging Deeper, where you've got to find some more things about their story or interesting facts about them or things that they struggled with. And um, I'm sure there are lots because there are some really colourful characters in there in my randomizer. And then the third page is where you have to choose one piece by that composer that you like and listen to it, obviously. And you have to um, say some basic things about the piece, like the title and if it's from a larger work and the instruments playing in the piece or if there's, if there's a singer. Um, and then you have to describe why you like the piece and in your own words. So in a moment, um, I'm going to take you to Seesaw and take you through an example which I've done. But first, it's time to select your random romantic composer. So simply press pause at any random point when the randomizer starts and when you first press pause, the composer on the screen will be your random romantic composer that you're doing your project about. So once you've chosen your composer, your random romantic composer, it's time to go to Seesaw and start your project. And I've got an example project here to show you. And you can see that um, I have a title page here and my composer is Fanny Mendelssohn. And this was not one of the composers um, in the randomizer, so you won't be able to just copy me but hopefully this example will help. So on the next page, we have our fact file. And the key information here is a full name, dates, nationality, and where she lived, and the number of pieces that she wrote. And that's actually 460, it's hidden behind this hand, it's more than 60. And then next page, and also I've put, I've put a little background in, um, here, you don't have to do that, but it's quite nice if you can. Then on to the digging deeper section. So interesting facts and stories about your composer. I just put a little bit here, but you could put more than that if you've got time, if you've got a particularly interesting composer. The, the interesting thing about Fanny Mendelssohn was that um, because she was a woman, it meant that she didn't really get the recognition that she deserved at the time, or possibly even now, um, although she is much more recognized now. Um, and she also had to lie that her brother had written quite a few of her pieces, for instance, the Easter Sonata that she wrote, which is um, was a popular piece. Um, she had to lie to the publisher and said that her brother wrote it. So it was published in his name because they didn't want to publish something by a woman. So there you go. And then the third section is the chosen piece. So um, I've chosen this piece and I've put the link to it here. You can add a link using those three dots and then link and find a YouTube link. And that's the full title, and then I've said it's part of a bigger work, which is the string quartet in E flat major. The instruments involved are these. Oh, there is no double bass. That's a mistake. Whoops. Two violins, viola, and a cello. And I put why I like it there. Okay, so you have to do the same. 
So after that on Seesaw, there are your, your template, and there's a template for a title page, fact file, digging deeper, and chosen piece. So you can move these things around and change the font and change everything about it, but I'd like you, and you can delete where it says your template page, but I'd like you to keep the main information there so that you know what information you're finding out. And if, if you're finding this task really easy, then you can expand on this section and you can find out more interesting facts and stories about them. You could add further pages for this digging deeper section. So this is really, you could do a lot more than, than what I did. Um, you could do some really interesting research there. And also you can dig deeper on the chosen piece. So you can, instead of just saying simply why you like it, you could go into a bit more depth about the piece and about the story behind it, um, about why the composer composed it, about the reception it got, whether people liked it or not, um, and all those things. Uh, so you could go into a lot more detail on these two sections. Okay, so that's why I'm giving you two weeks to do it. So do, don't submit this task for this week. Wait till next week, um, and because then you will have had time to finish it. Okay, bye.